Pleasure. Thank you. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Feeling great? Well, uh, good morning. Welcome along. As uh, Matt mentioned, my name is Jamie McIntyre. I'm sure I've had a chance to meet some of you. And who's been out there watching DVDs instead of TV of late? Like a few of you. Just show of hands. Who's, who is a 21st century member or a spouse of a 21st century member? Just show of hands. Okay. And just keep your hands up nice and high if this is the very first uh, seminar with 21st century. Okay. So there's a few uh, here for the very first time. And who's been to our four-day education for life event? Just going to show of a room. Okay, fantastic. Well, welcome along. It gives me a bit of an idea of where you're up to as far as the different stages of education. This program I enjoy teaching. It's my, I say it's my second most favourite program to teach other than the four-day Education for Life event. But I, I really enjoy teaching uh, entrepreneurship and, and the exciting opportunities that have existed for some years now on the internet that are continuing to get uh, even more exciting. Because what's exciting about this program is that there's certain, when you learn about certain, say, investment strategies, um, often you need some sort of capital to take advantage of those. Uh, what's great about what we're going to learn about today and over the next few days is that it's a level playing field. And actually, there's many things we'll talk about here you don't actually need any capital. Who could be excited by that, by the way? Okay? Because the biggest challenge you have in helping most people become wealthy or why people don't have the dreams that they want, the lifestyle, though, will blame the lack of what, do you think? Lack of money, which is just an excuse anyhow, but we'll look at that. Um, but certainly today we'll be able to eliminate that excuse because what we're going to talk about on the internet and business, um, I think really gives anyone the opportunity to create the lifestyle of a millionaire effectively. And, uh, and what's exciting about that, you could effectively develop that lifestyle, I believe, in the next 12 to 24 months or less without even needing to become a millionaire. Who would like to have a millionaire's lifestyle without actually having to become a millionaire? Okay? And who wants to become a millionaire regardless? Okay? <laughs> so, um, so whatever, you can certainly learn how to do that. But I think what's important is that um, the strategies are realistic and applicable. And how this program became about was that about four years ago, I was, um, one of my colleagues had said to me, do you remember such and such, uh, a mutual friend of ours for, that I hadn't seen for many years? And I said, yeah, I remember that gentleman. And uh, he, I said, he's a doctor, right? And he said, yeah, well, he used to be a doctor. And uh, however, he gave up, he quit being a doctor um, because he's making up to $90,000 US a month on the internet. And this was many years ago, four or five years ago, when making money on the internet was not so common. These days, uh, who knows of someone that's making some decent money on the internet? Who at least knows you know, someone? Or certainly, It's much more common these days. Back then, it was seen like, you know, really very unrealistic. And um, so I became curious. Let me ask you this question. Who here would get curious if you had a friend that was making $90,000 a month US on the internet? It certainly got my curiosity because I didn't know a lot about the internet. I had preconceived ideas about how to go about generating... Actually, I didn't even know how to make money on the internet because no one ever taught me and I never really studied it. But it got my attention enough and a seed was planted that day. So I sought out to catch up with my old friend that I hadn't seen for some time, really curious to learn how, was he, how did he do this? How was he making up to that sort of money and what was he doing? And, uh, ended up, and he'd heard I was being doing quite well, so we caught up for lunch and exchanged ideas. And, and that was the, f the beginning, really, of my internet career. Because I'd actually found someone that was producing a result that I could see, actually, this could actually work. And he was doing a particular strategy, and there's many... What's great about today and this weekend is there's not just one way to go about making money on the internet. Okay? There's many different ways. And as a result of that conversation, that led me to saying, you know what? One... It is possible to make money online because now I have a friend that's proven it to me. Two, if the shortcut to success in anything, and I thought, well, I don't know how to make money online. It might be okay for other people, but what about me? Then I thought, hang on, Jamie, how did you become successful in real estate before you knew nothing about real estate? How did you become successful in the share market? How did you become successful as an entrepreneur? And I went back and realized I got one, I got started without having to know everything. You want to jot that down. Here's a good idea. Get started before you know everything. You know why? Because if you wait to know everything, you'll never get started. True? So we're going to get started this weekend if you're willing to play this game with me. If you're serious about this and you're open-minded enough to say, you know what, I'm eager to learn, and I'm willing to, to take action, then you can start to see some results this weekend. That's exciting. It's not like let's learn something and hopefully in three years' time we've learned enough to maybe start to earn an income from it. These are things that you can actually start doing uh, fairly quickly. So what I realized the shortcut had always been to success was to find people that already produced the results that I wanted. 
instead of trying to figure out how to do it myself, to go and learn off them. Does that make sense? What I've, that's what I, how I learned about property. I knew nothing about property. I found people that were successful in that endeavour. I learned from them and I modelled their success. Okay, model what they did. And uh, who thinks that might be a good idea, by the way? The concept of modelling. For instance, um, one of my mentors we'll talk about today has been in business has been someone like Richard Branson. Now you can model, you know, someone like Richard Branson it may not mean you become a billionaire like himself. But what if you only become a fraction as successful financially as Richard Branson? Who'd be comfortable just a fraction of his success? Okay? Um, so, in other words, modelling doesn't guarantee that you'll replicate the exact same results. You can say, well, I'm going to model Warren Buffett in the share market right now. Okay? It doesn't mean you're going to become worth $30 billion. Okay? But if you can have just 1% of his success, who thinks that would be worthwhile? Okay? And that's the point of modelling because uh, most people, one, they don't have the mentors or the model and they're actually modelling um, the people around them. So we're all modelling. You think about children, is it true? When children are growing up, they learn completely by modelling. You ever notice that if you swear and a child starts modelling? Who's ever had that experience before? <laughs> you be careful not to swear around children because they will model everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, because they're great models and that's how we learn. So we're not going to do anything different this weekend other than say, hang on, if we want to achieve a certain goal, then let's model people producing a certain result. So what I've done over the years, I've went out and sought out uh, mentors and role models in each particular area, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in the share market, whether it's in entrepreneurship. And uh, as I've learnt off them, uh, applied those things and produced above average result. Okay? Uh, which, which I wouldn't have been able to produce otherwise. And now what I do also as an educator is that a lot of those people I've learnt off, I actually then get them to come in and share with you as well. So this weekend, you'll be able to pick the brains of over a dozen successful entrepreneurs, uh, many multi-millionaires from the internet, uh, several from the US that have flown in to be here this weekend to share with you, uh, many from Australia as well, so with localised knowledge. So you're going to be able to effectively tap into um, literally decades of experience. And not only learn the fundamentals of internet marketing and business and how to be successful in those endeavours, but also access some of the latest technologies and the latest things. Because one thing about the internet, uh, it changes rapidly. What may have been working four years ago uh, may not work as well today. Who, who would agree with that? Okay, those who, who would know a little bit about that. So the goal of this program, what the goal has been when I created this program, uh, three or four years ago, was to say, what if I could create a program where the end result was to teach people how to generate, say, $4,000 a month or more in income within a 12 to 24 month time frame? So that's how I went about creating this program many years ago. And it's been very successful that. So the end result of what we want to go through here in the next two or three days is that you can walk out of here and take the knowledge, apply the knowledge, and ideally within a 12 to 24 month time frame, generate $4,000 or more per month online, effectively. Who would be happy with that outcome if that become true for you? Now, I also respect there's some people in this room already that I've got to acknowledge and commend that have already started on their internet careers. Is that true? They're already down the road and already making good money on the internet. So here this weekend might be just a matter of picking brains to fine tune what you're doing because you're already taking some knowledge and you're, you're down the path. But I'm going to assume here the majority of people are internet virgins. Is that true? Show of hands if you're an internet virgin. I guess some of you don't want to admit you're an internet virgin. It's okay. <laughs> and who has at least some experience on the internet? Okay. Quite a few people. And who's not going to put up their hand no matter what? I ask, okay? So, in other words, so majority of us here are just beginners and that's okay. So when we go through some of the strategies, some of the speakers that will come along, they will get a little bit advanced because, remember, they're used to doing this stuff for years as far as making money on the internet, etc. So they think it's quite simple, but sometimes they forget, hang on, when they first for starting, everything seemed complicated. So stay with it if it seems complicated, etc. What you have as a 21st century member, what we've made available for the very first time, uh, which some of you know about, is that uh, on Sunday, when we finish the program Sunday, as a, every 21st century member, you'll be able to get a copy of the Internet and Business Home Study, which in the past you would have had to pay for. That's going to be a gift for each and every one of you, uh, which will help accelerate your learning. So if you do miss any things, uh, you have the chance like, to, to go over a lot, of, not just, you know, um, obviously this event which you'll get um, is being recorded, but that will be for a future one, but there's two or three past events that record it with a lot of different speakers. So, um, you know, probably all up maybe 18, 20 different speakers you can learn off, so more than what you'll learn just from this weekend. But it gives you the chance to go over and see it a couple of times. Who thinks that might be a valuable 
uh, for you. So, uh, and that's why we've done that because I found there's two effective ways to teach. And uh, the most effective way to teach is not via seminars. You say, Jamie, why do you want to run seminars then? It's not the most effective way to teach. Well, seminars are, are effective, but not as effective. I found for myself, when I'm looking at something brand new, whether it's renting shares or, or whatever new concept or whether it's the internet, for me, I always need to see the concept three, four, five times, and then I get to the point and go, aha, now I've got it. And when I reach that point, then I take action with it. But there's a gap I find for many people when we first see something new, we don't quite get it, and it causes a thing called what? Confusion. Confusion, true. And often that can cause procrastination. Is that true? Now, I know no one in this room has ever procrastinated before, but who knows other people out there that <laughs> procrastinated in the past, okay? You know, some people like that. So often that can stop us from taking action. So at 21st Century, one of the reasons we've been successful, we're coming out for 10 years now as an educational organisation, we've been so successful at getting people to produce results, is we try to teach it in a way that's very simple, so you can actually get it, and then give you the resources such as DVDs, etc., where you can continue your learning, um, so you have your space repetition. Because we can teach you a lot in these three days, but if you're going to become an internet guru, or even you're just going to make two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month eventually from your internet businesses, then it's going to require a continued education. Is that true? Your know, success is ongoing learning. And that's exciting anyhow, because we're always learning different things. So that's the essence of the outcome is, is about a teacher program to share with you how you go about generating at least $4,000 a month or more from internet incomes in the next 12 to 24 months. Now, some of you in the room will be fast learners, will have a certain level of base knowledge, which will enable you to accelerate that. You know, I've heard of people walk out of these events within a matter of a couple of months achieve that sort of success. I've had people now make, you know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a month of income that they're able to build from online incomes as a result of sitting in a program uh, such as you're sitting in several years ago. I've known 21st century members that have started internet business and sold them for hundreds of thousands of dollars, some for millions of dollars as a result of that. So I'm also going to teach you it's not just about how to make the cash flow per month, but there's a bigger way to make a lot more money for those. Is anyone in the room here interested in getting seriously rich? Does anyone want to get seriously rich? Okay. I mean seriously rich. Okay. Not just a couple of million dollars, but I mean 10 million, 100 million, potentially a billionaire one day. Is that of interest to anyone? Okay. So I, I think they did promise that I would uh, share a strategy around that today. Uh, and after lunch later today, I'll share with you what I call the billionaire strategy. And it relates very uh, directly applicable to what we're talking about as an entrepreneur and what we're doing here. Now, of course, I'm not going to suggest and promise you're going to walk out of here and in five or 10 years or 15 years become a billionaire. Okay. Maybe some of you will. However, the whole goal is modelling. Does that make sense? If you can walk out of here and be 1%, model just 1% of that success, and uh, build an internet business or, or, or whatever, a, a normal business, and be able to generate or sell that for a million dollars or you know, even a couple of hundred thousands of dollars. So for the average person, that's a significant benefit. Would you agree? Significant benefits. So um, I'm going to walk you through that process because we're going to look at the biggest mistake most entrepreneurs make. And uh, in this country, we've got some good examples to share of uh, uh, entrepreneurs in this country in the last six, 12 months that have made some horrendous mistakes. And we'll use that, some of them as, as a test case of what not to do. Okay. Um, so we're going to learn the BNS strategy today as well. I'm also going to teach you, uh, as I said, it's not just about the internet, it's also about uh, uh, building businesses, but it's also about going about where you're at right now to make a transition. Who is in a, who's full-time employed? Who works for someone else? Okay, probably 50% of the room. Who's already, who's self-employed? Okay, and who uh, prefers not to do anything? Okay. <laughs> Retired investor, whatever, go to Bondi, uh, your choice, whatever you do. So, um, so half the room is employed. So what I'm going to do is there's a transition because there's all an element of fear. Is it true? We're in life, we've heard about good concepts or we've got excited about something or a business opportunity or something. And we've been excited and it hasn't quite worked out. Most people have been through that journey. So what we want to do is be strategic about what we do. In other words, if you're an employee, and a full-time employee, but maybe you want to move, and try and move out of that where you have a lot more freedom, then there's strategies to go about having that transition. Okay? Transition of how do you go from being full-time employed to maybe uh, becoming, you know, uh, self-employed, where you're generating enough income where then eventually you can leave your job. And doing that strategically as opposed to the fear, <gasps> what if this doesn't work and then how am I going to survive? Okay? The good thing about what we're talking about here this weekend is there's effectively no risk. 
Uh, I mean, as far as internet, the only thing that stands between you and making, say, $4,000 a month or more online right now is effectively two things. One is the knowledge. Is that true? For most of you, it's a lack, lack of knowledge. And we're going to solve that this weekend. And two, the other thing is time. The time factor of applying that knowledge, taking action, and the time lag it takes to get those results. Making sense? So that's what we're looking at. It's not a lack of capital because most of these ideas don't require a lot of capital. And we've seen in the past, we look at the dot-com era, that companies that had heaps of money threw it at dot-com ideas or threw it at building websites, and they had all the millions in the world and it meant, meant nothing. Because even if you have the capital, it's not necessarily going to be the, the key ingredient on the internet. What the key ingredient is, the knowledge, the strategy, the, the ability to take action with that. Okay? So, we've got a lot to learn. So part of what I'll teach you today is also some quick uh, tips as well as how, how do you go about getting a pay rise, how do you go about accelerating your existing income. So as we build up these additional incomes on the side, we're not neglecting our current income as well. So many of these strategies help you increase your income because that's only going to accelerate what you do. Okay? So we've got a lot to get through. So everyone stand up quickly. My challenge to each and every one of you, I'm going to share with you as much as I can in the time that I have with you today, uh, strategies and information and knowledge that I would have paid literally hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, to access if I could access this knowledge uh, 15 years ago when I was starting on my journey as an entrepreneur. It would have been that day, would have, if I had to pay it, write a million dollar check, I would have done that because how valuable it is those things that I've learned. I'm willing to share those things as much as I can with each and every one of you. However, my challenge for you is this. What you do with it is ultimately up to you. Is that true? Makes no difference to me. Makes no difference to my bank account whether you become hugely successful or do absolutely nothing with it. It's your future that we're talking about here. So my challenge for each and every one of you is one, if you want to get the most out of this weekend, if you want to get the most out of your life, the biggest challenge is to keep an open mind because we all have our preconceptions. Will it work? Won't it work? It's all right for other people. Um, you know, maybe that worked four years ago. Or it's all right for that person, etc. If we don't have an open mind, then we can reduce our effectiveness at applying these strategies. And who is that ultimately going to cost? You or me? It's going to cost yourself. It's going to cost you and a lack of income in your bank account. What could have been done where you see other people go out and do what you could have done, but you, you didn't because you didn't keep an open mind. My... Um, definition of intelligence is this, uh, the, the sign of intelligence is the ability to entertain a new idea. Does that make sense? The sign of intelligence is the ability to entertain a new idea. And Albert Einstein says that the uh, sign of intelligence is the application of an idea. In other words, the ability to implement an idea. And they go hand in hand. One, we must first entertain ideas, and two, we must be able to apply those ideas. That, to me, is the definition of intelligence. So this weekend's all about that. How do we keep an open mind, let go of our preconceptions, even you think, well, I know nothing about the internet, I don't even think it's possible, maybe for the lucky few, but if that's your belief system, open, entertain new ideas. If they can apply to you, take advantage of them. Make sense? Two, I challenge you to take lots of notes. I challenge you to review the DVDs afterwards so you get the full value out of this. Okay? And my last challenge is that you take these ideas and you profit as a result of these strategies that you consider giving 10% of what you make to me. Raise your hand that's okay with everyone. <laughs> Team, quickly pass out the legal documents. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to give it to me. I challenge you, though, to get the concept of giving to charity or a cause or community or something that you believe in that's greater than you. And I share that with you two reasons. One, I think it's a good principle to live your life by, but two, it's also a very strong uh, uh, strategy for increasing your wealth. Because if you have the ability and access the, the opportunities to increase your wealth, to have more money than what you actually need to live a comfortable life, should you not exploit that to make an excess abundance so then you can go and use that money um, to serve other people that maybe not be as fortunate as you are? You live in one of the richest countries on the planet, one of probably the best countries in the, in the world that you'd ever want to do business in. It's not perfect, but uh, compared to everywhere else, I couldn't think of any other country that you'd rather do business in than Australia. Does that make sense? Now, I may be biased, I'm Australian, but uh, I've uh, conducted business in other countries, and there's some great countries out there with opportunity. However, I basically figure this. If you can't make it in Australia, then guess what? Give up. Okay? If you can't make it here, you're not going to make it anywhere. 
We have an abundance of opportunity, abundance of wealth. Even though I know right now in the world there's a, a lot of the global credit crisis and the stock market crash and there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, what we're going to look at today is strategies and you have this knowledge where you can develop your own certainty. And actually you can profit um, from a global credit crash. You can profit from a stock market. You can profit from tough economic times by being a leader, by being innovative and not being fearful. Being locked in fear like the masses doesn't serve anyone. Does it make sense? But by being certain within, by knowing the knowledge and, and being better educated, we can have a sense of certainty. You can be like a Warren Buffett, where Warren Buffett right now has a strong sense of certainty when the world is in chaos. A Richard Branson is not necessarily panicking. He's adjusting. He's innovating. He's getting prepared to take advantage of difficult times. So that's part of being an entrepreneur. So before we get started, what gives me the right to speak on subjects such as uh, internet and, um, and entrepreneurship? Um, I'll be right up front with you. I don't classify myself as an internet guru. I'm someone, we've obviously brought in internet gurus for you this weekend. However, I've been fortunate enough to make millions and millions of dollars uh, online um, since I've learnt these strategies. So I'm a student and a big advocate of what you can do on the internet. And I've been able to do that in many uh, different companies and many different industries for that matter. Um, as an entrepreneur, I'm, I mean, I was fortunate enough to uh, build over five different companies and you know, more than five companies, but five companies that have been multi-million dollar companies in different industries. So uh, I've been able to take these strategies. Many people might build a multi-million dollar business in one industry on one company, but be able to replicate that in numerous companies, you know, uh, in different industries takes a lot greater skill. So I don't share that to impress you, but impress upon you. Today is not like going to a university lecture where we're going to teach the, the theory of what could be done in entrepreneurship or on the internet. We're actually talking here uh, real life things that have been done, are being done, will continue to be done whether you do them or not. Does that make sense? And there's a big difference in that than just, I mean, theory is great, but I've always wanted to learn off people who have been out there in the world and actually had to do it themselves. And uh, that's certainly helped me learn a lot. Now, also, as an educator, one of my careers uh, is an educator, and I've enjoyed that over the last nine or so years. And that's also given me greater insight working with a lot of people and helping them, you know, articulating strategies to be able to impart that to other people so they could replicate that. I've met many people that I've interviewed, very successful people from multi-millionaires to multi-billionaires, and some of them been incredibly successful successful, but if we had to get them up on stage to share with you so you can um, replicate that, most of them, because it's uh, unconscious, they wouldn't have the ability to articulate that or systemize that in a way that you could take advantage of it. Does it make sense? So in essence, it's not just having the knowledge, it's also being able to impart that knowledge, which is valuable. Then it can become what we call mainstream. In other words, other people can take advantage of that. And effectively, that's what we do. We take sophisticated strategies and make them available so everyday people can take advantage of that. But in saying that, uh, most everyday people don't take advantage of it. And that's uh, actually a good thing. I used to want to help everyone become wealthy, and then I changed my mind a few years ago. And I realized helping, um, helping people that are not willing to help themselves is really a what? A waste of time. Who's ever found that to be true? Okay. And uh, you can only help those that are committed. So what I want to suggest to you, why the opportunity exists and why it is possible to be willing to expand your mind and consider that is because most people won't be doing these things. Okay. Um, because only a certain percentage of society is willing to put the time, the effort um, into developing their education, whether it's financial education, whether it's their internet education, business education. Only a small percentage of people are willing to do that. And as a result, those who do have a competitive advantage to those that don't. Now, some people say, that isn't fair. Well, life isn't fair, is it true? I don't create the rules, it's just the way it is. But think about it. It's a bit like saying a neurosurgeon that's earning maybe $400,000 a year. Can a garbage collector earning $40,000 a year complain and, and say, it's not fair, I'm only earning $40,000 a year, neurosurgeons earning $400,000 a year, life is unfair and it should be changed? Yes or no? No, the difference would be neurosurgeons spent, what, six years at university, then done prac, then been out there, had to build a career, developed skills that few people have. And as a result of that, he or she earns $400,000 a year, where a garbage collector has developed skills that pretty much anyone has. Who here is confident they know how to collect garbage if you had to, to survive? See, it's, it's a skill set that the large majority of people have. And as a result, you want to, this is what determines your income, by the way. One of the things 
is by how many people can do what you do. By how many people can do what you do. I a garbage collector, anyone can do that. So the demand for that service, even though there's a demand there, divide that by the number of people can do it, creates a low value What's you'd pay someone to do that. Making sense? We're a neurosurgeon. There's more need to collect garbage in the world than there is for a neurosurgeon. True? However, the demand that exists for neurosurgeons divided by the number of neurosurgeons in the world means the value per neurosurgeon is very high and thus why they can command high fees. Making sense? So what has this got to do with me getting rich on the internet, Jamie? Well, it's got to do with anything about the income that you uh, have in society. It's all determined, jot this down, it's all determined by the value, jot this down, the value you add. In other words, to be, become wealthy or to have any level of income in society, you must add value. You must add value. Now, if that's true, then how much you're worth or how much you're earning right now should be a direct reflection of how much value you're adding to society. Correct? Who thinks that they're not uh, getting paid enough money? Okay. Some of you are not going to put your hand up because you go, hmm. So now there is exceptions to this rule. The exceptions are this. If we look at, um, by the way, I'm a capitalist, in case you're wondering. If we looked at the, uh, I hope no one has any issues with that, this is a capitalist seminar. I believe the best system is not perfect and the people are talking about capitalism is coming to an end. Jot this down. Bullshit. Um, <laughs> I'm a compassionate capitalist. I think that's the best system. It's not perfect but compassionate capitalism. In other words, helping people, capitalists basis, helping people have their own opportunity to expand, increase their income and knowledge and add value to society. But the wealthy, the ones that are better off, being compassionate to take care of the ones that can't help themselves. Who agrees that's a fair thing to do? Notice that's not to take care of the bludgers who aren't willing to do anything for themselves. There's a difference in that, okay? And that's where I agree what Rupert Murdoch said a few weeks ago about Australia, great country. However, our national icon shouldn't be the bludger. Okay? And there is that element in our culture. We want a very rich culture, very rich opportunity, but there's an element of, of entitlement. Is it true? I don't know where that comes from, um, but there's an element of entitlement. And that is a poison for anyone that wants to become wealthy or wants to become independent um, because welfare is you know, it's not going to help anyone. We've seen that. If you give a hand up, it doesn't really help. If you give a hand up, it's far more effective. So what am I talking about that for? Well, the idea of communism was the idea that everyone should get equal. Okay, if you go to Cuba or go to Russia, what well, used to be in Russia, but it's changed now, but let's say Cuba, one of the few communist places left on the planet, the doctors get paid the same amount of money as the garbage collectors. Does it make sense? The idea of communism, everyone gets paid by the government the same amount of money. Now, does that encourage innovation, improvement, and a society to continue to evolve, yes or no? In theory, it sounded great. Life should be fair, everyone should be treated equally. But it's a misguided thinking because people, if you want to go out as an individual and perform and produce more results in society and uh, deliver more value to society, do you deserve to be rewarded more than someone that couldn't be bothered doing anything? Yes or no? Absolutely. So the unfair advantage you have by developing these skills as an entrepreneur as uh, whether you're an investor, whatever skills you improve, you have a competitive advantage to the rest of the population. Why? Think about it. It's the same an uh, analogy as a neurosurgeon. There is there a demand to market goods and services in the world via the internet, yes or no? There's a demand to be able to deliver goods and services in a less expensive way to a larger amount of people. How many people are good at that? Or how many people have the skill set to do that? Well, divide that by the opportunity, and that's why you can earn a very large income. Makes sense? Because these skill sets, everyone, not everyone has. Not everyone's willing to put the effort in to develop them. And as a result, it's just like if you spend six years at university and get a degree, you get a higher paying job than someone generally that doesn't. Making sense? Because so it gives you a competitive advantage. That's what you want to use and take advantage of, and that's why it is possible for a, a percentage of the population to earn an extraordinary amount of income. Now, whether it's fair or not, it's irrelevant. It's just the way it is. And that's the way the world we operate in. So are we going to take advantage of that or are we going to miss out on that? Who's following what I'm saying here? Okay. So here's what we're going to do as an overall strategy. Jot this down. First of all, I want you to... Now, some of you are saying, yeah, I'll have an open mind. I'll consider this, but I really don't see how the internet can really 
you know, it's not really me, or I can't see how I can make enough money from it. Uh, it's all right for other people. Um, I'll tip my, put my toe in the water and I'll see how it goes. Okay, I'll see how it goes. Now, that's a very different attitude to if you're like, you're absolutely committed, I'm going to do whatever it takes to master this because I'm committed to following through and producing a result. Very different mindset. And even though I don't believe it's possible right now, I'm going to keep an open mind and pursue and focus on what I want and model the most successful strategies and never give in and continue to refine what I do until ultimately I produce a result that I'm happy with. It's a very different attitude. Okay? Now, some people don't see the benefit big enough, therefore they don't put enough effort in. If they realise the benefit was great enough, they'd be like, I'm going to put the effort in. And often that makes the difference. The people that raise the standards, put the effort in, follow through, produce a greater result than those that don't. The ones that don't is because they're not seeing the value in doing it. So let me enlighten you and highlight to you for those who don't yet see the value of this. If we're talking about here dedicating ourselves part-time the next 12 to 24 months to be able to set up incomes on the internet, whatever forms of incomes you generate, to let's say produce a $4,000 per month um, profit to you, okay, from the internet businesses, then that's f effectively 50000 a year thereabouts. That is equivalent to $1 million in real estate fully paid off, earning 5% net rental return. True? And even though rents are going up right now in Australia, to get 5% net is still very difficult. Okay? 5% net. Does that make sense? So hang on a minute, you're going, actually, if we put this in perspective, if we can put the effort in and treat the internet with the, uh, to, with the level of respect it deserves, not some little, just a little side hobby that we might do, um, but something we're going to say, we're going to take this seriously, we're going to put the effort in. And if we can develop incomes of that, all of the accomplishments is 4000 a month, and it takes us two years part-time dedication to get to that level of success, worth 50, you know, almost 50000 a year, that's equivalent to having a million dollars in real estate fully paid off. Now think about it for the average person. What's more likely, buying a million dollars worth of real estate in the next 12 to 24 months and fully paying it off from their savings, or going to work part-time, developing their skill set and developing an internet career to generate $4,000 a month or online? Who's starting to see the difference now? Okay. So we see, so well, let's treat this seriously because the internet actually has tremendous capabilities. And then what we're going to look at later is we're going to say, well, if we've got businesses generating passive or semi-passive income, it's not just the income that we're after. That's exciting, is that true? That's what we're after initially. But what we're going to look at later today is say, how do we take that income and then turn it into real money, into a capital uh, creation of, of something that's saleable, something that you can sell for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, in some cases millions of dollars. Uh, if you get really big, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. It's the same principle. Who could be excited about that? That's going the one step beyond what most people see. Most entrepreneurs are just focused on the cash flow, which is great, but the big picture what we're looking at is creating cash flow because that cash flow has a multiple value. And we look at that with the BNS strategy, how you can tap into that. I jot this down. The overall concept of 21st century is to teach this ideology. Syn jot this word down, it's synergy. One way to accelerate your results is through synergy. And what the synergy is, is using a combination of different ways to create wealth, not just one. So for instance, Let's say we all start with a job generally. We leave school, university, get a job, start earning an income. Um, so this first criteria is our job, or then we might set up ourselves up as a business or businesses and expand our income from there. And the whole idea of most wealth creation is that we, we save some of our income and we put our surplus cash. Generally, the most common way is put it into what do you think? Into property. The most common way people become wealthy in Australia has been start with a job or business or move into a business, develop surplus cash flow, put it down as a deposit on a home or investment property, and over time, real estate tends to go which direction? Well, it depends where you live, okay? But in, certainly in Australia, our uh, experience has been, since the exception of real estate in this country, that it has gone up over time. 
Make sense? Okay. And as a result of that, we've generated capital value. Then the, another way to accelerate, which I added to what I was doing many years ago and I learned off one of my other mentors, was the concept of the share market. I used to be just like I used to be preconceived about the internet and didn't treat it seriously. I used to have the same attitude towards shares. I was like, why would I want to touch shares? I can make a fortune through real estate. It's easy. I buy it. 